Good evening and welcome to evening prayer. We are going to be holding evening prayer live and you can watch it afterwards on YouTube from today and to until and Pentecost. So this is the Church of England's evening prayer that so many places say together, in fact, other churches as well. And you can just listen or you can join in, whatever you'd like to do. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To you be glory and praise forever. Raised to your right hand on high, the ascended Christ shows the prince of love and bestows on us the gifts of grace. As your spirit renews the face of the earth, may we bring forth the fruit of the spirit and reveal your glory in all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. We're going to read a psalm, psalms that have been used to sing God's praises thousands and thousands of years. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. One generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty acts. They shall speak of the majesty of your glory and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. They shall speak of the might of your marvellous acts and I will also tell of your greatness. They shall pour forth the story of your abundant kindness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his mercy is over all his creatures. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mighty power to make known to all peoples your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures through all, throughout all ages. 
The Lord is sure in all his words and faithful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are, who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and fill all living things with plenty. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over those who love him, but all the wicked shall he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh bless his holy name for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29. Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land, the great trials that your eyes saw, the signs and those great wonders. But to this day, the Lord has not given you a mind to understand or eyes to see or ears to hear. I have led you for 40 years in the wilderness. The clothes on your back have not worn out and the sandals on your feet have not worn out. You have not eaten bread and you have not drunk wine or strong drink so that you may know that I am the Lord your God. When you came to this place, King Sion of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan came out against us for battle, but we defeated them. We took their land and gave it as an inheritance to the Reubenites, the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Therefore, diligently observe the words of this covenant in order that you may succeed in everything that you do. You stand assembled today, all of you, before the Lord your God, the leaders of your tribes, your elders and your officials, all the men of Israel, your children, your women and the aliens who are in your camp, both those who cut your wood and those who draw your water, to enter into the covenant of the Lord your God, sworn by an oath, which the Lord your God is making with you today in order that he may establish you today as his people and that he may be your God, as he promised you and as he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. I am making this covenant, sworn by an oath, not only with you who stand here with us today before the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here with us today. It's very hard to read those words about the land of Israel without thinking about what's happening there today. So perhaps we can spend a minute to offer up a prayer. Our New Testament reading is from the first letter of John.
We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you. That God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now by this we may be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does, does not obey his commandments is a liar, and in such a person the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly in this person the love of God has reached perfection. By this we may be sure that we are in him. Whoever says, I abide in him, ought to walk just as he walked. Let's just spend some time maybe reading through that, thinking about what John has to say to us. When you send forth your spirit, we are created. You renew the face of the earth. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. You renew the face of the earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. We remember in the evening the words that Mary said after she heard the news of the angel. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. 
From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We are using this time between Ascension and Pentecost, these 10 days, particularly focused on prayer. And that time of prayer, thy kingdom come, is being shared, not just in this country, but all over the world. And appropriately, we begin with prayers for peace. Think of the stories you've read, the pictures you've seen, what you've heard. Lift them to God, Lord of Peace. We know you long for peace, and we do too. We pray for Gaza, for Ukraine, for Sudan. for Haiti, name other places that come to your mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'm going to share some other prayers from the worldwide church from lists of prayers that we have so this is church of england prayer diary where we pray for the anglican communion all over the world but that's not that one that's this one and today we're remembering Richard Wilson, who was a priest a hundred years ago, who was active in social reform. And we pray today for the Diocese of Eha Mufu in Nigeria, for Bishop Daniel, for all the priests that work with him, for the many people in the church there. Thank you for them, Lord, and bless them. We pray too for our near neighbours, St Mary's in West Kensington, who are looking for a new priest. We pray that that search will be successful and the right person to join and lead that community will be found. And we pray for Kate and Sandra and others there as they look after the church in the interregnum. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And these are the prayers from Open Doors, who work for the persecuted church worldwide. And they bring to our notice people and places in need of prayer. And today the focus is on Sri Lanka. 
where there are worries that an online safety bill will be used to silence or otherwise um, take action against Christians who say things that people don't like. So, Lord, we pray for wisdom. We pray for compassion and understanding. We pray that this bill will be used in the way it should to keep people safe and not to silence your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are asked in this time to particularly focus on five people, people we know, people who we long to be part of the kingdom, be closer to God. We are God's royal priesthood. We are empowered by the Spirit. Picture those people, name them. God so wants to know them, so wants to get close. We pray for any barriers to be broken. We pray, Lord, that you give us any words or actions that will help you to get closer to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We know that maybe we've experienced ourselves. There are times when we feel we're looking for you and we can't find you. Times of spiritual dryness. When we feel we're waiting. Lord, we pray for those who wait on God. That your spirit may fill them again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. our God and our King. We pray that your kingdom will come, that your kingdom will be recognised and known by everyone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the earth. 
We pray particularly for those who work closely with the land, especially in areas where either unseasonal temperatures or floods or difficult conditions have made it so hard. I think today of Brazil, where there have been such bad floods that no one can travel, that the airport's underwater. Lord, we pray for those who've lost their homes, lost their livelihoods. Father, help us to have the political will to look after this earth you've given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we're asked to pray today for those who struggle with broken relationships. Lord, we lift to you the heartbreak, the hurt, the pain and the practical difficulties that beset so many people. Whether it's couples, parents and children, working relationships, they're easy to break and difficult to mend. Lord, comfort and strengthen those who are going through such troubles. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, Leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to read the Lord's Prayer, but do feel free to say whatever version or language of it feels closest to your heart. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, 